Good evening, everyone. Wynn Brown here. It's uh, Thursday, March 26. I'm here with the Haywood Healthcare COVID-19 evening update for everyone. Uh, first to the numbers, uh, to date we have tested 201 inpatients and outpatients. Uh, we have have 67 results back that have uh, no virus detected or negative. Uh, and we have a total of 10 positive. So the numbers continue to climb in our community. Um, we have nine inpatients at Haywood that we are consider patients under investigation uh, or suspect patients, and we are waiting their lab results. We have four patients who are positive for COVID-19 currently at Haywood. I have had some feedback uh, over the past day or so from uh, community residents and, and some staff who are concerned about the slow turnaround time uh, for results. And I've shared our frustration with that as well. Uh, in particular, some of the earlier tests that were put in largely through LabCorp have lagged and we are there five days out. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to retest uh, some of those patients that were tested earlier. You know, we use a reference lab and so we really don't have a lot of control over that. But, but thankfully, our experience to date with Quest, uh, our newest reference lab has been excellent. And so I think you're gonna to continue to see the turnaround times uh, improve. And so just wanna acknowledge that. And I know that is a, a, a frustration for a lot of people. I want to let you know that uh, yesterday we uh, distributed a thousand surgical masks to staff as they came in uh, our organizations. It was 750 today. A uh, lot of work being done again on supply chain with uh, Scott Scott Jansen's is his team. Um, we've had some small deliveries of product today, but nothing major. Uh, we continue to be extremely tight on. Uh, I never thought I'd be excited about or worried about purple PDI wipes, but. Again, it's a very important disinfectant for us and we're very low on that. Also, gloves and gowns are low and so hopefully we will get some deliveries coming up. And again, community members who have uh, masks, N95 masks, surgical masks, uh, gloves, please deliver those to the hospital. They have honestly bolstered our supplies incredibly well and we just couldn't do it without all of you. And so please, please don't forget to keep, keep coming to us and, and delivering us those things as well as the hand-sewn uh, masks as well. I mentioned uh, earlier that we are um, working with CSO, uh, which is on our, our Athol campus, and we're gonna ha have information coming out uh, how to access uh, the counseling support and services, uh, and, and that will be out tomorrow. Don Cassavant will get that out, um, and we'll put that on our intranet for those folks who would like uh, some support uh, for the, the stress and anxiety that is going on uh, as we are caretakers uh, during this pandemic. Um, I also uh, spent a part of my afternoon with Jim Walsh, the acting mayor, and Representative John Zlotnick at uh, Gardner Public Access Television today, and we did an update video for the community on the pandemic and how the community is, is responding, and, and just uh, so look for that on public access. That'll probably be out pretty soon. Um, we've had some, uh, also some uh, questions come in over the internet from, from patients and family members or from community members who are interested to know that if a patient is uh, tested for COVID-19 and sent home to self-quarantine, are we, do we give them instructions and education on how to uh, try to limit the spread of the disease uh, at home? And the answer is yes. And so just wanted to let folks know that we, once we test someone, we do give them information and support uh, to make sure that uh, they have the information they need. Uh, important information about food service, uh, major change happening starting Monday on the Athol and uh, Haywood campuses in those cafeterias. Obviously, there's a lot of people that gather there. Uh, we have a lot of staff that come from across different departments, uh, and there's just a lot of intermingling there despite our work on social distancing and uh, making the, the, the tables farther apart with fewer chairs. Um, we really feel that we need to do more to uh, limit the potential spread of infection there. So soda fountains will be, um, will be leaving, uh, juice fountains will be leaving, and we are actually going to go to a limited entree option uh, that'll be from the hotline or prepackaged, uh, especially salads. Uh, and so staff will be able to come through the line, uh, pick one of those things, be given a drink, and, and to go on either dine in the dining room uh, with better social distance or go back to their, their break rooms uh, and that will be free of charge. So we're going to be providing meals free to all staff at, at both hospitals uh, to make sure that one, we support you and make sure you have the nutrition you need, uh, but also to uh, improve, our, improve our infection prevention when it comes to our food service. So stay tuned for that beginning on Monday. 
uh, our urgent care centers and outpatient uh, areas will be receiving uh, meals uh, from different uh, local uh, restaurant establishments that we'll be supporting. So that is on Monday. Uh, a big shout out to EVS and Food Service. You know, they are really the magic behind the scenes for us, feeding us, feeding our patients, uh, and keeping our environment safe and clean. And so I, I want to acknowledge the great work that they're doing to support us. They are uh, often the unsung heroes, and we, we need to recognize the great work that they're doing. Uh, and finally, just a nice uh, heartfelt thanks to Flowerland and Athol for delivering flowers today to our ER and to every patient uh, at Athol Hospital. Really a thoughtful thing to do. And I'm just uh, continually amazed at what our community is doing to step up and support us in myriad ways. Uh, Flowerland is just one example. All the PPE that has been delivered to us, uh, the thoughtful notes uh, via email to us as well. Uh, and the great thank you videos that are coming in, I encourage you to keep doing that and, and, and hop on, uh, on that and, and send those in. Those really are supporting our staff as we continue uh, to journey through this pandemic together. I wish you an incredible evening. I hope you have uh, time with your family uh, this evening and time for relaxation uh, as we get ready to go at it another day tomorrow. So thank you for everything you're doing to, uh, as we continue our journey to be one of the best community-owned health systems in America. Thank you and good night.